chemicals in our brain that uh, specialize in lots of little tasks and, and they combine forces. And if one approach doesn't work, it will try something else until it solves the problem or it gives up. Now, your approach is to essentially create an artificial brain, replicating what we see in human brains as much as you can in electronics and artificial components. Uh, and so you're looking at trying to get electronics to be very dense, very quick, uh, looking at heat issues that are involved in that. And you believe that if you get this uh, model close enough, if you build it, essentially consciousness will come. Is that, is that correct? Is that an oversimplification? Well, or is that wrong? No, 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 that's fine. Um, I mean, it's just common sense, really, right? It, if, it's big if, but if you copy the brain closely enough, long enough, uh, and, and in sufficient detail, sooner or later you'll end up with uh, some creation that mimics the brain very, very closely, and, and therefore it should behave in the same way. That, that's the basic idea. So, uh, so I... Uh, so along those Great. lines, uh, how would you, we've got the uh, DARPA Synapse Project, we've got the EU's FACETS Project, are, are those essentially working in the same vein in terms of trying to physically construct a, uh, a brain that is modeled after the human brain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that's one of the two broad approaches. And you've got a lot of other people working in um, the more engineering approach. Mm -hmm. So those two broad approaches they see as the, the fundamental two. Yeah, and they're all kinds of variants, but they're, they're the two big ones. Now, we also have the Brain Initiative that's uh, been, been funded by the Obama administration. $200 million this year, uh, $300 million next year. That's half a billion dollars that they're funding. They're saying that it is to the human brain what the Human Genome Project is to DNA that was trying to sequence the uh, uh, DNA. Uh, what do you know? What do you think about the uh, Brain Initiative Project? Uh <laughs> I suspect there's a little bit of politics. I think they're trying to catch up to the Europeans mm -hmm. who, who came out with a billion dollar, well, a billion euro, actually, it's even more, um, uh, brain project they, they gave to Professor, uh, what was his name, um, Markram in, uh, in Switzerland uh, to, uh, to, to fund him to create a, an artificial brain that, that uh, mimics very closely, in fact, even to the level of uh, the connection between two brain cells or two synapses, uh, uh, two neurons as they're called. Uh, so he, he Markram, uh, what's his first name? Henry, yeah, Henry Markram. So he got a, a billion dollar research grant from the European Union to, to do this, to, to build an artificial brain. And what you're just saying uh, just a little bit before, the half, half a billion dollar uh, project uh, similarly in America uh, and the Japanese are also putting a lot of money in this. Uh, the, the, the time is ripe. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the electronics, uh, you're probably familiar with the Moore's Law in oh, yes. electronics. Yes. So, so, you know, well, just quickly for those who don't. Um, Moore's Law simply says that the number of transistors you can cram onto a computer chip keeps doubling roughly every year or so. And this trend's been around since, oh, God, mid-60s. So it's about... Uh, Half a, half a century old, this trend, and it's still valid. And, you know, it hasn't hasn't fizzled out. It's still true. So, if you take any number and you multiply it by two, by two, by two, by two, you end up with a huge number. So, the number of transistors on today's chips is up in the I think it's now into the tens of billions, right? So, you can put a lot of chips together in a in a computer box, and you can make a very powerful system. So, the electronics is now enabling readily you know, within reasonable costs the production of artificial brains. So it's not surprising you're seeing these artificial brain projects popping up all over the world like mushrooms. So uh, I, I see it's only a question of time before you know, the, the I, I call it the IQ gap. Yeah, you have, you have uh, several different arguments as to why you think this is going to uh, lead to the rise of the Artilex in, in, in your book. And of course, one of those is the military momentum argument, as you point out, an intelligence gap, just as we had a, uh, a space gap uh, with uh, Sputnik. You know, we got, we got concerned about that. There's always this competition between different governments that they don't want to get left behind militarily, and they tend to view everything uh, from a military uh, standpoint. Actually, as Eisenhower pointed out, uh, it's the military-industrial complex. Part of it would be that it would take over pretty much all research at the universities. And that's, uh, I think we're seeing a large part of that happening now as well. I want to, when we go, we gotta go to break. When we come back, I want you to lay out how you see this coming to a conflict. And I wanna talk about the uh, time frame that you also see this happening.
And stay with us. We're going to be right back. We're talking to Dr. Hugo DeGaris, one of the pioneers of artificial intelligence. We're talking about the Arlec War. And we're going to be talking in the next segment about Cosmos and Terrans. Stay with us. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey Water Filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters Filters can last for five to ten years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Usually, the older one gets, the less you are able to absorb amino acids and the less you are able to repair the 100 trillion cells of your body. As a result, you'll have less energy, your tissues will shrink, and you'll become wrinkled. An older person will typically injure more easily and heal more slowly. Not fun. However, if you can consume a protein powder that is easier to absorb, then you may be able to gain back some strength, muscle, and speed of recovery. One World Whey is a highly digestible whey protein powder that may be the perfect answer for you. My name is Errol. I'm 74 years old. You know, the taste of One World Whey is amazing. I play pickleball, and since taking One World Whey and your trace mineral supplement, I have more energy and recover faster from my working out. I used to take another grass-fed whey protein powder, but now I'm getting much better results using One World Whey. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. Hi, folks. Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. It's very easy to be a criminal. All you need to burglarize a home is one simple household tool, a pair of scissors. If your home security system can be compromised by a criminal using scissors, then you're making it easy for them. Almost every home security system, even those sold by big name companies, has a weakness. The phone line. You shell out 1500 bucks, get locked into a long-term contract, and think you're safe. But a burglar can destroy your alarm in seconds with one snip. And when a burglar cuts your phone line, you you're defenseless. Simply Safe Home Security is the smarter choice. Built by Harvard engineers, Simply Safe uses a wireless connection to call the cops. Scissors can't cut it, and that means your home stays safe. 24/7 professional monitoring is under $15 a month with no contract. Simply Safe Home Security keeps you safer than the other guys for half the cost. Protect your home with the alarm you can trust. Simply Safe. Go to simplysafedefense.com now for an exclusive 10% offer. That's simplysafedefense.com. The preacher man says it's the end of time And the Mississippi River, she's a gold grind Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Dr. Hugo DeGaris from uh, China right now. That's where he is in the middle of the night, but he's graciously consented to come on and talk to us at this time. And Dr. DeGaris, there's an article that's up on The Guardian today, Artificial Intelligence and Nanotechnology, quote, Threaten Civilization. Of course, nanotech is one of the enabling technologies that you envision for a runaway, godlike artificial intelligence to take place. 
it's, it has uh, potential end of the world uh, problems itself, doesn't it, with uh, gray goo? Well, yeah, nanotech uh, combined with uh, superior knowledge on how the brain works, coming from neuroscience, uh, microelectron or nanoelectronics, see a, a, a real wedding between those two. So neuroscience on the one hand, and nanoelectronics on the other hand, mm -hmm. and that 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 is heating up already. So uh, in the 2020s, I, I think you'll start seeing what I call the IQ gap, mentioning a bit before. Yes. The IQ gap between human level intelligence and machine and particularly home robot level intelligence, that gap uh, in the 20s, 2020s, will seriously start to close. And then you can imagine uh, you know, billions of people asking the same questions. You know, are, we, are we going to allow machines to become as intelligent as we are? Could they become more intelligent? Is, isn't that threatening? Is, is this something we can stop? What about the rivalry with China, between a China and America for the dominant uh, power of the planet? You know, that, that, that kind of thing. So exactly. I see a real, a real debate uh, heating up. Well, it's starting a bit now. Um, I don't know if you're interested, but yeah. we could go through the various phases. Yeah, and I want to just mention, I threw that term out there, gray goo, for people who haven't looked at it. Uh, there's the idea that, again, nanotech could turn into a runaway process as well, just... Uh, start replicating and essentially uh, get out of control like uh, the old science fiction movie, The Blob, with uh, Steve McQueen in it. Uh, so all of these technologies, there's, there's a concern that it's going to reach some point, uh, because technology is accelerating so fast, that there's a concern that it's going to reach a point at which it runs away from us. And of course, you believe that with artificial intelligence, uh, once it gets to a human level of independent thought, that it's going to essentially run away because it's going to start redesigning and improving itself. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, once, once you have a machine, remember the machine is thinking a million times faster than we do, right? Our human brain cells, we're, we're thinking, well, our cells are communicating between each other at, a, at about 100 meters a second. That's, that's sort of maximum speed. Whereas an electronic brain, it, it would be thinking at the speed of light, right? The signals between the components in, in electronics is the speed of light, which is a million times faster. So these machines, when they start reaching human level of intelligence, plus uh, their million fold uh, faster thinking speeds, very quickly they could redesign themselves, right? And then the product could redesign itself, so on and so on. And uh, then you get a kind of acceleration. And so very quickly you get into hyperintelligence. And uh, physics, the physics of computation, predicts that uh, these machines could become literally trillions of trillions of times more intelligent than we are. So they, they would be veritable gods. I guess in the short term, one of the things that I'm more concerned about, of course, is the uh, military, the kind of DARPA uses of machines. You're saying that as uh, robots uh, go into our homes and so we start using them domestically, people, the mass public is going to look at this and say, wait a minute, these things are getting smarter every year. They may wind up taking us over. I'm concerned about the uh, robots uh, that we're seeing as, as we've had Dr. Noel Sharkey on. He's concerned about killer robots, about autonomous killing machines that we uh, use as part of a uh, military competition. Worried about that getting out of hand. You see a different way of uh, this turning into an artificial intelligence war. You see different factions uh, breaking up over whether or not we should continue to move forward with technology versus those who say we need to put the brakes on it stop it or maybe even completely disassemble it. Could you break that down for us real quickly here, the uh, Cosmos versus Terrans? Okay. Well, uh, those two scenarios that you've been mentioning, I see uh, they'll, they'll proceed in parallel. You know, the, the great rivalry between uh, China, the, the rising China mm -hmm. and the, the declining uh, U.S. Um, so if you imagine you're Minister of Defense and you have control of the research budget, uh, on one side, whether you're, you, whether you're Chinese or American, you do not have the luxury to allow the other guy on the other side to get ahead of you in, in terms of, say, the level of intelligence of your soldier robots or whatever. So that rival will go, will go ahead. But uh, on the second scenario with the, you know, the domestic side, the, the commercial, getting music. Yes, yes, hang on. We've got to go to a commercial break. Right after the break, we're going to have Dr. DeGaris uh, break down his central thesis that he put out in a book 10 years ago, Cosmos versus Terrans, and see how this might break out other than 
a competition between military powers. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Dr. Hugo DeGaris. We're on the mark.